Hello, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to write ionic formulas from names. And so in our naming adventure, this is part two. So for starters, we will talk about binary ionic compounds. Binary compounds only have two elements present. We've already learned about naming binary molecular, so now we're talking about binary ionic compounds. So they're composed of a non-metallic element and a metallic element and ionic charges are used to assign both the formula and the names. And so the formula is written to show the lowest whole number ratio of cations to anions. Remember, compounds are neutral, so you always have to write something that reflects a neutral compound. <clears throat> So to do that, we use something called the crisscross method. So you'll see me referring to lowest whole number ratio, and I'll talk about using the factor method. So in this instance, we use something called the crisscross method, where we take the numerical charge of each ion and crossed it over to become the subscript for the other ion. So what we're really doing here in math terms would be uh, looking for the least common multiple, so to speak and the signs of the numbers are dropped. So the first rule would be write the formula of the cation, and the cation is usually going to be a metal ion and its charge. So remember, charges are shown as superscripts. Then write the formula of the anion, again with its charge, which will be a superscript. And then crisscross the charges so that the charge, the magnitude of the charge on the cation becomes the subscript for the anion and the charge, magnitude of the charge of the anion becomes the subscript for the cation. And again, you drop the signs. You never see a compound written with subscripts that have signs. So let's do an example. Iron Roman numeral 3 oxide. So that means that it is iron with a plus 3 charge and oxygen so oxide means oxygen, and oxygen is in group 6. 6 minus 8 is negative 2. So it helps to remember what the charges are going to be. So iron has a plus 3, oxygen has a minus 2. So now we're going to crisscross. That 3 is going to become a subscript, and that 2 is going to become a subscript. So we write this formula using the crisscross, and we would end up with Fe. 2O3. So notice that this 2 comes down here and becomes the 2. Again, no sign. And this 3 comes down here and becomes the 3. So now the correct formula for iron 3 oxide is Fe2O3. And if you think about the signs, 2 times 3 is plus 6, and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and plus 6 minus 6 is 0, we've made a neutral compound. So note the charges are not included as part of your subscripts. So let's look at <coughs> a ternary ionic compound. And ternary ionic compounds are compounds that contain atoms with three different elements. So it usually means that there's a polyatomic ion present. And you use that same procedure for writing formulas as we did for binary compounds, only you use the polyatomic ion in parentheses if there is more than one of them. So for instance, the compound magnesium hydroxide, there are going to be two hydroxides, and so we have to put it in parentheses. So let me give you some examples of where this all comes from. So example number one, calcium nitrate. So calcium is a group two metal, so its charge is plus two, and the nitrate ion has the charge of negative one. Using the crisscross method, we would get CaNO3 parentheses two. So here, this 2 has to come outside of the nitrate ion. But remember, the nitrate ion is a unit. You treat it as a separate atom. So the parentheses are telling me that there are two nitrate ions, not CaNO32, because that would mean 
this particular formula would be telling me that a calcium was hanging out with a nitrogen and 32 oxygens. So in order to show that there's two of this whole nitrate ion, we need to put it in parentheses. We can't write NO32. So example two, magnesium carbonate. So magnesium is a plus two because it is a group two metal and the carbonate ion has the charge negative two. The formula would be Mg2CO32. Now you'll notice that we have twos here and we have to remember that when we write a formula for an ionic compound, we have to reflect the lowest whole number ratio. So those twos can be factored out and we result with MgCO3. So we still know that the charge is plus 2 and minus 2 and plus 2 minus 2 is still 0. It's neutral. It's just that putting those two twos there would indicate something other than the lowest whole number ratio. So we always have to use that factor method to write the lowest whole number ratio to represent the formula unit. And finally, my ternary ionic compound, example number three, lead four carbonate. So lead is PB, the Roman numeral four means it has a plus four, and the carbonate ion we know has a negative two charge. So the formula by crisscrossing would be PB2CO3-4. But once again, we have this problem where this 2 and 4 subscript situation can be factored out to a 1 and a 2. So the correct formula for lead 4 carbonate is PbCO3-2. And again, remember to use the factor method to write the lowest whole number ratio when you're writing these compounds. So for now, I'm going to sign off. But this is, again, our second part of our naming adventure. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.